You say this to someone that you might trust at work. <laughs> Probably wouldn't say it to someone that you don't trust so much. They might feed it back to the boss. This one's for you. Oh, it's finally time. Okay, yeah. Welcome back to episode six of the casual curriculum cook along. And there's been a big break since the last one. We've had a wonderful time with our boys this summer. But now it's time to get back to learning some everyday English and a little bit of cooking as well. So today's topic is all about idioms, which a few people have asked me about. Idioms are very, very important phrases that are used in in casual conversation. And if you want to sound more like a native, these are very, very important. And at the same time, as mid-autumn is coming up, mid-autumn festival, it's getting cooler here, you want to be comfortable, you want to be warm. So we're going to make a traditional English broth, which you might want to try for mid-autumn festival wherever you are, to really warm up the heart. Okay, so there we have it, idioms and a chicken broth. So let's jump in. So first things first, with this type of heartwarming food, it's actually really simple to make, but it does take a little bit more love and a little bit more time. So what we already did this morning is begin to prepare our broth. So we're gonna make our chicken stock in advance. So here's our chicken from last night. All we're going to do is just pour over this stock, pop the lid on, and we're just gonna leave that for two hours. Okay, so there is the beginning of our soup, our broth that is gently simmering away and what I would be over the moon with is if you guys try your own broth at home and let us know how it turns out and actually there's your first idiom as well over the moon you know what that means yeah like so happy you can jump over the moon oh like the nursery rhyme okay <laughs> Yeah. So as you can see, we're trying to work in our little mid-autumn festival theme here with that coming out very soon. But the main focus of today is, of course, idioms. Idioms are basically interesting phrases that we use very commonly in English, which have very different meaning to the literal interpretation. So for example, over the moon, obviously we're not literally flying over the moon or jumping over the moon. But what we are trying to say is our emotions are very high and we feel very, very happy. So no literal meaning, but phrases that people understand in conversation. <laughs> Agreed. So with all of the topics that we do with our casual curriculum, it's all about trying to give you confidence so that you can use them in your own everyday English use. Hold on, I'm ready. So hit me with the first idiom. So actually what we have there, like I don't even need to do the first idiom because Gladys has just given us the first idiom. Hit me. Now, obviously again, no literal meaning. You don't want me to physically hit you. I hope that would be weird. What you mean to say to me is give me the information. Hit me with the news and give it to me straight. You can also say shoot. Basically means tell me the information, give it me accurately as possible. And people will use this quite a lot. So that's idiom number one. What we're going to do now is prepare the next part of our broth, which is the veggies. <laughs> so talented. I'm like a jack of all trades. Master of none. So all we're going to do is we're going to chop up our veg as evenly shaped and sized as possible. There we have my carrots, loosely similar sized. And then I'm going to cut the leek very quickly. Just adds a bit more flavor into the broth. The thing I like about this time of year is when it is cold outside, you make a broth like this, it really warms you up. Okay, so idiom number two. He's a bit under the weather. So he's under the weather actually means not feeling very well. Maybe you've got a cold coming on or a flu. Basically means they need some time or you need to take care of them. It's very indirect, but it's very well understood by people. I think it makes 
makes sense. Like, you go to lock suit, unlock you, you get wet, and then you get sick. It makes perfect sense. I feel like that's a very Hong Kong way to think about things. Like, to applying literal meaning to something that literally doesn't have meaning. <laughs> Be careful, you nearly cut your... Oh my gosh, you got to control it. Right. Let's just compare potatoes. We were going for similar shape and size, yeah? What is that? Those are two of Gladys's. Just like we are similar shape and size. Okay, let's transport that all over into one. I quite like this bit, actually. And this is where a broth is very simple. The best broth is the broth that you cook for the longest amount of time. Okay, so all of this lovely veg is going to go into our nice comforting broth now. Woof. That's what you want to see. I feel longer already. Right. You want it to go in without slopping. There we go. Obviously, there's a lot more density with all the veg in that pot now, so what we need to do is add some more water. Seasoning. Then follow up with the pepper. Bay leaves. Really add a lot more flavor. Give it a quick stir. Pop that on and just let it cook for as long as you want. Next idiom, number three. We have, I'm sorry, I've just been really snowed under lately. Oh. We'll do something soon. Again, weather related, snowed under. Um, basically, what you're trying to tell someone here is you've been under a lot of pressure. Maybe you've had a lot of work to do and you've not had time to do anything else. You can also say I'm swamped. Yeah, yeah, very good. This one I would say is most often used maybe in an office situation or work talk. You say this to someone that you might trust at work. <laughs> Probably wouldn't say it to someone that you don't trust so much. They might feed it back to the boss. Oh, I'm like, sorry. Hey, go see those things. Oh, I'm snowed under. I'm swamped. Don't see they say. It doesn't make you look good. Don't say it too often or you look really bad at your job. Idiom number four. You're gonna have to bite the bullet or I bit the bullet. Please don't take it literally, but of course it has a meaning. Usually, if you're biting the bullet, it's gonna be a very unpleasant situation or a situation that you don't really want to happen very often. Let's say I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and fire this person. It's a decision that you don't want to make, but it's the right decision to take, then you're gonna have to bite the bullet. For example, if your friend is to bite the bullet and fire this person, but he doesn't know how to do it, he doesn't know how to do it, he's scared, then you tell him, you have to bite the bullet and fire this person. Sometimes you need that ruthless friend to tell you what's good for you and break up. Bite the bullet. Okay, so there's four down, one to go. I can hear the broth bubbling, so let's have a quick check on that and then we'll finish with our fifth idiom. Oh my god. Goodness. It's quite vibrant, isn't it? I'm going to turn down the heat so we can really let it reduce, get as much flavor in as we can. Okay, idiom number five. And I'm actually going to put this one to you oh. and see if you can explain it. Spill the beans. Oh, yeah, sorry. You have one bowl, and then you have to spill it out. Shh, shh. Don't really see the connection there. What you want in someone to do is reveal some juicy information, like a secret. Going back to the example you gave before about a potential breakup. One friend is the ruthless one who's told you, go and bite the bullet, go and do it, break up with this person. Maybe you have another friend who's a little bit more nosy and wants to find out the aftermath. They want you to oh. spill the beans. Like, 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 Baby, juicy detail, like, what is scandalous, what's happening? What's the gossip. Exactly. There we have it. Those are our five idioms for today. There are so many idioms that you can actually use. People use them so commonly. It's a very important part of conversation mm -hmm. in England or any English speaking place. And it really is kind of like conversational, colloquial style. In England. And a local student. Oh, your phone case is sick. phone case so I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm watching the it's like, what? <laughs> Your phone case looks good, it's cool, it's sick. If you want to learn more local phrases, idiom, slang, we will learn a lot of I think it's another one of those topics you're not going to learn in a standard school. So hopefully it's helped you. If you really like this topic, we can revisit it because there are so many you can do. So if you've enjoyed it, please let us know in the comments. Last thing we need to show you today is how our boys react to chicken broth. 
Because they're not the biggest on soup, are they? No, I don't know. I feel like I'm very successful. Why do you like two girls? I don't like the tang and the soup. Fingers crossed. Right, here we go. Here's the finished chicken broth. Wow. Right, this one's for you. Just one little spoon. You have so many, you have so many. That looks like Charlie Bucket supper every night. It's cabbage water. How much money? Pauline's father. Party on the lake. Proper autumn food. Delicious.